Rebuild procedures for the Holland FW70 fifth wheel. Note, this rebuild procedure applies to multiple FW70 top plate versions, including the following. Preparing and inspecting the top plate. Begin by removing the top plate from the mounting base. Remove the bracket pin retention bolts from both sides of the fifth wheel top plate. Using a pry bar, pull the bracket pins out of the fifth wheel top plate and set aside. Note, follow the instructions published by the lifting device manufacturer for proper operation of the lifting device. Using a lifting device capable of lifting 500 pounds, remove the top plate from the mounting base and place it on a flat, clean working area or rebuild stand. Next, completely remove and discard all components. Important, rebuild kits contain all components necessary to completely rebuild the fifth wheel top plate. Do not reuse old parts. Caution, do not hit steel parts with a steel hammer as parts could break, sending steel fragments flying in any direction creating a hazard which, if not avoided, could result in minor to moderate injury. Once all of the parts have been removed, thoroughly steam clean the top plate. Inspect the fifth wheel top plate for cracks, flatness, and loose lock pin holes. Fifth wheels with cracks must be replaced. If the lock pin holes are elongated, the top plate must be replaced. Warning: Do not attempt to repair or rebuild if the top plate is cracked or distorted, or the lock pins do not fit tightly as the top plate may fail or the locks may malfunction. Failure to properly install, operate, or maintain this fifth wheel could result in tractor-trailer separation causing death or serious injury. Spring Compression Tool Before starting to reassemble the fifth wheel, it will be helpful to fabricate a spring compression tool out of metal. This will aid in fully compressing the plunger spring when necessary. Use the dimensions shown on the screen when fabricating the compression tool. Primary Lock Installation Begin by installing the stationary lock into the casting as shown, with the large counter bore facing down. Install the lock washer and lock nut onto the threaded end of the stationary lock. Finger tighten until the lock can still rotate slightly to ensure alignment with the kingpin. The lock nut will be tightened fully later in this procedure. Next, apply grease to the spring and install it into the casting as shown here. Please note the correct orientation of the spring. Lubricate the lock pin hole in the secondary lock with never seize. Do not use a substitute lubricant. Place the secondary lock into its approximate location in the casting. Important: Coat the lock pin hole in the swing lock with never seize. Do not use a substitute lubricant. Insert the swing lock between the ramps and temporarily set it under the rear rib. Note, it is important that the swing lock is inserted at this time, as after the plunger and adjustment wedge are in place, it would be impossible to insert the swing lock. Adjustment Wedge Installation Begin by installing the adjusting screw through the hole located in the throat of the casting. Install the compression spring over the screw, then slide the adjusting wedge over the screw. Compress the spring and install a lock nut. Tighten the screw with a 1 half inch Allen wrench until the nut is fully engaged and the spring begins to compress. The screw will be fully tightened during the lock adjustment procedure after the rebuild is complete. Release arm, release lever, and plunger installation. First, check the fit of the release lever inside the slot in the plunger as shown. The rounded end of the release lever must fit freely into the slot in the plunger. If the parts do not fit together freely, it will be necessary to deburr the rounded end of the release lever. 
once you have checked the fit, remove the release lever in order to attach it to the release handle first. Begin by installing the release handle through the guide slot in the casting as seen here. Install the end of the release handle into the hole in the end of the release lever. The open end of the release handle must be oriented toward the outer edge of the casting as shown. Next, guide the round end of the release lever through the guide rib in the casting. Install the nylon bushing into the release lever so that the flange is between the casting and the lever. Now install the washer onto the cap screw as shown and insert them through the release lever and into the threaded hole in the casting. Loosely tighten the cap screw as shown until the plunger is installed in the following steps. Note, your rebuild kit may contain a hex lock nut for the release lever cap screw. If the hole in the casting for the release lever screw is not threaded, it will be necessary to secure the cap screw with this hex lock nut. Next, lubricate the tail and faces of the plunger with a light grease. Install the spring into the casting as shown. Insert the plunger through the plunger slots in the casting and the spring. Use the spring compression tool to hold the plunger in place with the spring compressed. Compress the plunger until the rounded end of the release lever fits into the slot in the plunger as shown here. Next, fully tighten the release lever cap screw. Warning, do not over tighten as the release lever must freely move. If it does not move freely, the fifth wheel may not couple properly or completely and could result in tractor trailer separation causing death or serious injury. Now remove the compression tool. Check the travel of the plunger. With the release handle in the closed position, the edge of the release lever should be a maximum of one half inch from the top plate casting rib as seen here. If there is an issue, begin by checking that the rounded end of the release lever is not hitting the plunger guide rib of the casting. If the rounded end is hitting the rib, bend the rounded end of the release lever down so that it goes deeper into the plunger slot. If the release lever is still greater than one half inch from the casting rib, remove the release lever and bend it until it is less than one half inch from the casting as shown here. If the square end of the release lever and or the end of the release handle is hitting the casting rib, grind the corner of the release lever and or release handle until it is one half inch clear of the casting rib. Swing Lock Installation If not done previously, lubricate the lock pin hole in the swing lock with Never Seize. Also lubricate the lock pin itself with Never Seize as shown here. Begin by placing the swing lock into position as shown, compressing the spring placed earlier. Position the lock pin and drive it through the hole in the casting and swing lock until fully seated. Secure the lock pin with a large retaining ring. Next, install the grease fitting onto the lock pin so that it faces to the side and will be accessible to the left side of the tractor. Secondary Lock Installation Position the secondary lock in the closed position in the casting as shown here. Rotate the secondary lock until it makes contact with the casting at this point. Check the rough location of the end of the secondary lock in relation to the swing lock. The gap shown between the swing lock and the secondary lock should be 3 16 of an inch plus or minus 1 16 of an inch. If the gap is less than 1 8 of an inch, remove the secondary lock and place a bead of weld on the fifth wheel casting at the point shown here and grind smooth. If the gap is greater than 1 quarter inch, remove the secondary lock and grind at this position on the secondary lock. Grind flush if necessary to achieve the desired gap, but do not grind past flush into the secondary lock. Make a final check of the gap dimension to ensure it is correct. If not done previously, lubricate the lock pin hole in the secondary lock with Never Seize. Now, 
Install the secondary lock release handle into the casting as seen here. Install the secondary lock onto the handle and then install the cotter pin in the handle and spread it. Lubricate the secondary lock pin with Never Seize. Then drive the secondary lock pin through the holes in the casting and the secondary lock. Secure the lock pin with a cotter pin and spread it. Install a grease fitting in the lock pin so that the fitting faces the side and will be accessible from the left side of the tractor. Lastly, install the secondary lock spring by hooking the small diameter end over the projection in the secondary lock. Install the large diameter end into the spring pocket in the casting. Finally, you can fully tighten the lock nut on the stationary lock as shown here. The Holland FW70 rebuild procedure is now complete. Important: Before returning the fifth wheel to use, a lock adjustment must be performed. Lock adjustment procedures for the Holland FW70 fifth wheel. Note, this lock adjustment procedure applies to multiple FW70 top plate versions, including the following. Note, to obtain proper fifth wheel adjustment, SAF Holland recommends the use of a Holland lock tester, available from a local SAF Holland distributor. If the fifth wheel is locked, pull the secondary release handle to unlock the secondary lock first. Then, pull the primary lock release handle to unlock the fifth wheel. Place the Holland lock tester onto the top plate and attach the J-hook of the lock tester to the underside of the top plate as shown here. Next, close the fifth wheel lock and verify that the plunger is fully engaged behind the swing lock. Before proceeding, first unlock the lock tester J-hook from the top plate. Using a 1 half inch Allen wrench, turn the adjustment screw in the throat of the top plate clockwise until tight. Now, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise one and a half turns, or six quarter turns if that's easier to visualize. The fifth wheel is now properly adjusted. Verify the adjustment by locking and unlocking the fifth wheel several times using the Holland lock tester. The Holland FW70 lock adjustment procedure is now complete.